as mentioned earlier, I finished reading the substantive parts of the Auto Tools book by John Calcote, Auto Tools Second Edition, that was published in November 2019. And I learned a major lesson from reading that book and reflecting over the process of trying to distribute files, distribute a software program to Linux, Mac, and Windows, right? So these days, most software is delivered through what we would call a package manager. The Apple App Store and the Google Play Store are examples of package managers, right? What a package manager does is it takes a software file that's in a particular format and make sure that that file meets the criteria for getting installed on the device. Today, Mac computers and Windows computers have app stores as well. Um, Microsoft calls theirs the Microsoft Store and Apple calls theirs the App Store on the Mac. Linux has had package managers for a very long time. You could almost say that Linux operating systems were the first to do package managers and they created the inspiration and concept for package managers used by Apple and Windows operating systems. So package managers have proven their worth and they are a very valuable way to ensure that you get your software on the system. I did say that this is going to be slightly geeky nerdy version of the discussion about auto tools. So when you're learning how to write software, whether it's through a university, a boot camp, or articles, webs, videos, books, that sort of thing, you oftentimes will run into a situation where you are shown how to write code according to a language, a syntax, and how to put software together in terms of how functions and classes and objects and different components relate to each other. That is all well and good and that is the main focus of the software development education enterprise as well as the real world practical application of software development. But one major piece that is often missing from all this learning about putting software together is getting it out to the people that are going to use it. Unless your audience of, of users are going to be technical people, IT people, software developers, and the like, then you need an easy way for those who are going to use your program to actually access your program. And so while we have development tools like Visual Studio, IntelliJ, IDEA, uh, QT Creator, the various tools produced by Ember Cardero, who acquired a lot of that from Borland, then you're going to need to know about the particulars of packaging your software and putting it together. Those tools will allow you to build your software and put it in executable form, but what they will not show you or what you will be uh, kept uh, away from doing is uh, taking your actual text files in your integrated development environments and seeing how they're actually converted from a set of source codes into a working program. And so you might ask yourself why you need to know that. Well, in most cases you don't. But if you're going to be a staff developer at Google, Amazon, Facebook, or any of the fame companies, Microsoft, uh, you're going to be an elite developer, software developer. You know, we're talking about people who work with um, more in-depth issues dealing with software, production issues where something has to be patched in real time. Those instances should be rare, but they do happen. Or people working in microcontrollers, working in embedded devices, right? You need to know how to compile software and you need to know how to um, deal with the software, not the code side of it, but the actual uh, deployment, the distribution side of it in a more detailed way. And so 
if you're dealing in C and C++, one of the best books for that is uh, written by Milan Stevanovic. Let me see if I pronounce his name right. I have it right here. Let me make sure I pronounce his name right. Milan Stevanovic. Yep, Milan Stevanovic, who wrote the book Advanced C and C++ Compiling, uh, that was released in April 2014. And while we've moved on to C++ 17, C++ 20, and we're looking towards C++ 23, the actual methods of compiling and putting the source code together um, or putting the source code into an executable, that rarely changes. So his book talks about the execution stages of a software program. It talks about shared libraries versus um, static libraries. It talks about um, how you compile code so that you have position independent code, for example, right? Um, it shows you um, different ways to version the software executable itself. These are things that are part of the tool set. They're not part of the language. And so when we're talking about tools, another great tool is called Make, M-A-K-E. What Make does is it takes um, the timestamp that's on your source code files, and if those timestamps are newer than the executable that is generated from the source code files, it's going to update the, the executable. It's going to produce a new version of the executable, right? And so Make is a, it's a fundamental automation for distributing software. One of the lessons I learned when I was building my program that I worked on for seven years, right? You know, I took a two-year break, um, you know, between uh, 2019, late 2019 and um, sometime this year. Um, I had some very important things that I needed to address and, you know, as far as personal things. And so I found some balance, right? Um, and once I found that balance, I was uh, at a point where I could re-engage with this process that uh, we're talking about here. But after reflecting on that over the last uh, little while here, one of the things I realized is that that focus on building the software, um, software instructions, programming language, uh, syntax, algorithms, data structures, all of that is important, will remain important. But just as important these days is build automation. Build automation is fundamentally important. I'm almost at the point, but I haven't quite gotten there yet, where I think that learning build automation first would lead to higher software development productivity for programmers and developers and architects in general. Reason I say that is that how productive is it really to learn all this language and all this syntax and do it in a cocoon, a silo, right? Doing that right on your computer. And then at that point where your computer needs to meet the real world, you're, you're, you're not ready to do that, right? And so it's like, yeah, if you work in a larger company, like I've worked in a larger company, like many of us have, yeah, we have the infrastructure for distributing programs to the audience of corporate people and business people and so on and so forth. But when we're talking about making a world-ready type of program that goes through app stores, that goes on multiple operating systems and all of that, well, most people are not um, in... They're not exposed to the processes for doing that. And by the time they, they do that, it, they might end up putting together a, a, um, a haphazard type of um, solution, something that's not uh, polished. You know, they might put out something that's not very polished. And so um, this process of um, software development where, yeah, you can build your, your code, you can, you can write your program and all of this, and then there are there are no barriers in terms of steps and procedures you take to get that out there uh, where it needs to be. Now, Make is a program that's been around, let's see, 
since 1976, since April 1976. And so it's been around a very long time. And so um, four decades, four, 40, 40, um, 47 years. So that's a very long time to uh, have software out there like that. And it's so it's, it's very reliable, very dependable. You can count on it being available and having very few bugs and doing what it's supposed to. But writing a make file by hand, which I've done quite a few, um, that's not something that um, is going to make you productive. That's not something that's going to even get you where you have a program that is easily installed across operating systems. So the next step above that is going to use something like Auto Tools. Now, in my um, uh, 2019 video series, C++ The Basic Way, I believe in video 9, I talked about using a tool named Bakefile. And this was this is a tool that is almost like Auto Tools in that you get to describe your, your deployment. But unfortunately, Bakefile ran into some issues, and um, one of them being that it uses Python 2.7, which is out of support, and the other being that it's not listed, it's not widely listed in um, uh, Linux repositories like it was at, at that time uh, that I was using it. And so it's uh, neither convenient to get, nor is it recommended to, to use if you're looking to use um, the most supported uh, versions of the infrastructure for these tools, right? So I would uh, suggest that um, while some of these easier build tools are um, useful for um, understanding the build process, they're not really going to get you there, right? And one of the things you'll find is when you're building an RPM or a .deb um, package, you know, .deb is for Ubuntu and Debian, right? RPM, you can use that for SUSE Linux, you can use that for Fedora, um, Red Hat Linux proper, um, and so uh, PC Linux OS. These, these packaging formats for your software, um, like I was able to get that to work and I did whatever I, I could to get it to work. I was going to allow um, all, all the requirements for putting a package together to get in my way. I made it work. I wrote scripts that made it work, right? But when you use auto tools, one thing I noticed while going through that whole process, it very much matches up with when you're using that software that uses dot forward slash configure, right? Um, so you might as well just uh, use auto tools, you know, or at least that's what I, I came to the conclusion for myself. Might as well use auto tools because that's going to lead... Uh, to a more proficient way of building packages and for deploying software across operating systems. And so um, me and this Auto Tools book off and on for two years um, as I was focused on, focusing on other things, um, I was, I'm so happy that I, I was able to get to the, to the real core uh, aspects of Auto Tools. And um, I just saw that, yes, if more um there's more focus is put on uh, learning deployment up front and then working your way backwards to the actual software development you'll probably end up with a higher quality software development process uh, just saying and so build automation is important and what you also want to uh, think about is you want to think about you know, your software build, right? So software build, um, what I have written here is software build is an overall concept where you're looking at converting source code files into standalone software. You know, that's what we've been talking about, right? And you're looking at version control. You're looking at code quality. You're looking at comp compilation, right? And you don't have compilation in every case, but you definitely have versioning, code quality concerns, and you also have the integration with the environment in which that program is going to run. And so becoming highly proficient with, you know, um, with the build automation is going to help your software build um, 
go a whole lot better. There are build tools out there like CMake. You got CMake, you got Mason, uh, M E S O N, Mason, like the particle, right? Uh, you got Mason, so, and you got MS Build. Um, MS Build is great for the Windows world, but MS Build, um, and, you know, I think you can use MS Build on Linux, but MS Build is not going to really get you there in terms of a, of a comprehensive um, deployment um, solution for a wider array of environments, right? Mason, um, in my opinion, is a little bit more server oriented. So that's more enterprise and that's more, and that's also another way of saying it's, uh, it's locked in to the company that um, needs to deploy uh, software internally to its servers, right? But it's, it's, not a, it's not a tool set for delivering software that's going to go out there uh, onto desktops or even uh, app stores. You know, CMake, another good one. Uh, CMake is the, is the major uh, competitor to Auto Tools. And I was looking at going with uh, CMake, but the reason I decided to emphasize Auto Tools is because Auto Tools is um, it's more mature. I like that. It is um, more widely embraced by the Linux community at large. And when I say that, I'm talking about those thousands and thousands and thousands of packages that are out there for Debian alone, right? And many of them are auto tools based. And you're going to have greater synchronicities when you are using the tools that are also supported by the main uh, project, in this case, GNU, right? And so you got uh, GNU, uh, GNU, um, C, C, C and C++ compiler, um, GCC, you got all the GNU tools, you got GNU lib, you got all of that. Um, if you're using GTK and, and other tools like that, they're all going to blend in with auto tools um, very, um, very smoothly. And so auto tools is not intuitive. It is not intuitive at all. But that's why it's good there are books out there on this, right? And I've seen some reviews on auto, on the Auto Tools book stating that it's not um, as good as the original documentation. Um, I've, read, I've read the original documentation. Um, I would say that the Auto Tools book does a good job of lining it all up. Let's call it kind of like a, a, a slightly deeper overview, if that makes sense. I mean... It kind of does, it kind of doesn't, but it's kind of like a, a deeper overview. And then when you want to use some of these manuals, right? Uh, this The manual for AutoConf, AutoMake, LibTool, right? Then at least you would have had the overarching background information um, to make you more productive. But I'm excited about AutoTools now. Um, after having um, gone through the torturous process of uh, getting... Um, clarity on it and how all the different pieces work together. Um, I can report that according to what I've read, and I have yet to put it into practice, I will in the next uh, couple of days, a couple of weeks. But what I um, understand is that um, AutoMake is going to autom auto automate, um, automate, yes, AutoMake is going to automate your make files. What that means is you don't actually have to go into all the details of writing make file rules, right? Uh, if Depending on how you have your project structured, that's absolutely awesome. And even though I say all of that, keep in mind that my point of view is know the in-depth details of all these things, see? So know, know how make work, know how make files work, know how to do that, right? Uh, know how scripting works, right? Because AutoConf is, is a automation for scripting, uh, for cross-platform scripting in terms of installing your programs. Know how the uh, package managers work uh, in detail in terms of like how uh, the different stages of the packages work um, in terms of distribution archives, um, running uh, checks to see if there are existing versions of the files, um, installing the 
the files um, and uninstalling them, resolving dependencies, all of that, right? So um, because you have these easy, uh, easier tools, right? They're just simply there to uh, maintain standardization, make things easier, improve productivity, but they're not a substitute for going in depth and understanding the systems and the system components in depth. They're simply a way of allowing those that know those things in depth to use them in a more effective way to streamline the overall software development process. So that's my insight on auto tools and my overview on it. Um, and I hope that you find these insights useful. Um, and let's see what 2023 brings for all of us that are um, using auto tools to make our processes more effective.